All right, so the 1934 Bears are going to demonstrate offense for us, and the 1948 Philadelphia Eagles are going to demonstrate defense for us. I've got them all on uh, various Invisa bases. Um, I have the Bears, uh, so just some background information. The five fellows in uh, the five blockers up here, those are called ineligible receivers. You cannot throw a pass to the five people here. So typically the quarterback lines up behind the middle person. These five guys, no passing to them. Everybody else, so here's the quarterback. The other five, one, two, three, four, five, are eligible receivers. These guys are typically called wide receivers. He's a tight end, two running backs. So it's a standard uh, offense I've got set up here. And typically, uh, the rules state that the offense is allowed up to two moves. You could do two pivots. In other words, I could take these running backs and pivot them like this. And if I do two pivots, then the defense would be able to pivot as well. They'd be able to pivot somebody and pivot someone else. If I were to do a single pivot, the defense would be able to respond with a single pivot. On offense, you could also do a combination of pivots and moves. So I could take this fellow and put him out here, and if that were the only move I did, then the defense would be able to take a person and match that move. Um, Again, you could do two moves or two pivots or some kind. You know, I could do one pivot and one move, and the defense would get to do exactly that. So, this is the way I'm set up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pivot, and I'm going to do a move. So now what I'm doing is I'm overloading uh, this one side. So if I were to play defense on this, I might pivot this fellow. Pivots are always done from the back of the base. Um, let's see, I'm also going to take this guy. He's no longer needed on that side. And I will put him... Well, let me jam him up right at the line here. Let's cause some pain here. So, the ball's going to go to number 77, Red Grange, all the way in the back. And what happens on a running play is the control, the remote control in this case, gets passed to the defense. And the reason for that is because the defense it's their best interest to stop the play when it happens. So, for example, Red Grange here, if he were running along against this Vikings defender and they made contact at the 20 and Red Grange pushed him, let's say, to the 23 before the board went off, the ball is placed at the 23. If they make contact at the 20 and the defender, this guy happens to be stronger, he pushes him back to here before the board gets stopped, or maybe the defender just lets it keep going and going and goes all the way into the end zone. It's not a safety. The forward progress is to the 20. So basically, as the offensive player, uh, that since the defender has the switch, if I'm up to the 20, that's, I'm not going to be marked any farther back than that. But if you don't stop the field, you the, you the defensive coach, you don't stop the field till here, I'm up to 23. That's where we stop it. That's where the next play sets up. So, at this point, Red Grange has the ball. The defensive coach has the control. So now what happens is the coach is going to play it until he tackles him, base-to-base -base contact, if uh, Red Grange were to go out of bounds. Or if uh, he's running and all of a sudden he decides to make a U-turn, then we just mark the forward progress, and that's where he's considered down. So let's see what happens. He's running into a couple guys here, but he's got a blocker in front of him. Oop. And he got hit in the rear right there, so he lost uh, three yards. So on the Bears, the coach is going to move one person here, and just one move. So the defense gets to do uh, the same kind of a move. They can pick somebody and move them. And I think I'm just going to take this guy here and put him over here to stop it. So I'm going to call an option. And what happens with the option is the quarterback has, he has the ball, but now he's not committed. So in other words, if he runs and he runs into his line, gets to the line of scrimmage, he has to run. Um, he also has the option, if he's within two base lengths, and again, I'm going to use the same invisible base here, so one, two, if uh, Bronco Nagurski were that close, he'd be able to pitch it to him. It's an automatic, you don't have to throw the ball or anything. Um, and then he would be able to run without getting, he wouldn't be allowed to pivot. Or the other option is, I could throw a pass. As the offensive coach, I get the, I get the control. So, 
Actually, I think I will just do a pitch to him. He's within two spots. So I, this is a pitch, so now number three has the ball. Bad call. It's like a third and long here. Um, so on this play, I've kind of taken all my uh, running backs and put them out into the field. Um, so I'm going to, since I know Red Grange turns to the right, I'm going to do that so I can sneak in behind number 56 here and maybe push it along. I'm also going to take my quarterback and do this so that he doesn't run into the line. Because like I said, when, you, when your base touches one of your offensive linemen, you're committed to run. You can't stop and pass at that point. But here what I've done is I've done two pivots. So the defense will also do two pivots. We'll shoot one out this way. And I guess we'll uh, shoot him out this way. So let's see what happens. The quarterback has the ball. The offense has the control. Number four has the ball. Let's see what happens. Okay, got a guy open over here, so I'm going to try and pass. By the way, this base, uh, these are on tweaked bases, so <laughs> didn't know which way he was going to go. So I'm going to go for number 77. And when you do a pass, this is where the quarterback was. Um, in some leagues, you've, you're forced to put a marker down, and but I trust myself. Uh, you take your other quarterback, you move it out of the way, off the field of play. Now you can angle your, you can throw the ball this way, throw the ball this way. Never mind the Minnesota Vikings color on the Chicago Bears quarterback. This is the one I'm uh, comfortable with. Um, so the trick is, instead of trying to lob it, you know, like that, it'll never lob like that. So what you do is you, sh you, you tilt it like this, and you shoot it like a rocket. You have to point to your receiver and you have to call out the number so there's no misconceptions where you're going to. Because if I accidentally were to hit number three, um, it's still a completed pass because he's not engaged. In other words, there's nobody touching him. So he would catch the ball, he'd be down at the 29 yard line. If I were to hit number six, it's considered an incomplete pass because he's what's called engaged. He's a defender hasn't touched. Number 77, of course, is open, so I'm going to tilt my quarterback this way, eyeballing where I'm aiming it. I'm just going to tilt it back here, and got him, right in the bottom of the base. So, uh, the next step is the, the quarterback comes in, I think it was facing this. The defense has the option to, you can't move anybody on offense. In other words, you can't pivot him because he's going to turn this way, so the question is whether he gets up to the 40 or not. The defense takes all of its engaged players, you mark the base closest to the runner, and you can position your player how you like. Right here, I'll pick him up, I'll move him, I'll put him like that. So cut off the angle. This fellow's engaged. Ah, this one's not engaged, so I put this corner here, and I put him on the chase. You know, actually, this guy I'm going to angle a little bit differently. So 77 has the ball, and now the control passes to the defense, because once again, if he hits the guy and he pushes him back four yards, well, he gets credit for those four yards. So now I'm the defend defensive coach holding the control. Touched by his guy, but not by the other fellow. Nope, good block. Okay, he got up to the 41 and he's turning around, so that's actually a first down. All right, um, I moved it from the 41 back to the 20 because it makes for a better camera angle the way I've got it up on a tripod. Um, so here what I've done is I've set up the Eagles in a very aggressive uh, nine-man front. One of the dangers of putting all your guys on the line, um, you'd think you want to engage these guys as quickly as possible. better solution might be to put him facing this way. This way you can pivot him if case uh, the offense makes a move you don't expect. But he'll also be running backwards with the receivers. But we chose not to do that. The, the other flaw we have is we have these two guys, these two defenders covering these two uh, receivers. What happens when I pivot this guy? Because remember, Red Grange turns to his right. You can't do the compliment. If you try to twist this fellow, he'll, you know, best case, he'll go like this. He'll just run into number 22, and they're just going to, these two, three guys are going to dance. 22 most likely won't get open, but. It's doing nothing to cover him. So in this case, I mean, fortunately we have a fellow back here. We try to uh, get him that way, which could work, might not work. But again, you're trying to make contact over a much longer distance than uh, a few inches. The other change I've made is I put uh, the quarterback onto a base where I ended up just removing all the prongs. So this base will just wobble in place. 
what that does is it keeps him in the pocket. I'm going to call uh, pass play with him. And it's similar to option, except I don't have the ability to pitch to anybody, but there's going to be nobody behind him anyway. Uh, this fellow's going to move forward. Nobody's going to be behind him to pitch. You can only pitch uh, lateral or behind you. Offense has the control. I've got two fellows open. I've got this one and this one. Um, this one's a shorter pass, and he turns this way. Now, the advantage of this is he's engaged, he's engaged, he's engaged. So they're not going to be able to pivot those guys. This guy can pivot and this guy can pivot. So if I pass, to this, this is still a pretty easy pass, a relatively easy pass. I could hit him, but uh, he's going to be right on his tail. This guy, on the other hand, um, whether these guys are spinning, he'll get past that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ball on here. Um, you know, I would go for him in a game, but since the camera's over here, all you're going to see is my uh, hairy forearms. So I'm going to go for number 56, again, pointing, calling his name. And number 56, here you go. Just missed. So the ball bounced and went by. The ball has to hit him or his base on a fly. That one didn't. That one bounced right next to him. So incomplete pass. So the Eagles learned a lesson on that one. They left two guys open on that play, so they're not going to put nine guys at the line. Actually, I have quite a few people at the line, but I've got these two fellows uh, going backwards because they see uh, the quarterback has a stationary bait. The pivot is just going to be like this. Um, and so the Eagles would get one player to respond. And I think at that point, I think I would just take him and hopefully he'll hit. So trying to eyeball that. Again, the longer the longer distance you have to cover, the more uh, variables get thrown in the way. So I'm going to call option with a quarterback because that'll preserve the ability for me to pitch to him because if all of a sudden if I see this fellow uh, decides to go for a water break, I might be able to get an end run here without uh, having to throw the ball because you saw my skill in the last uh, play. So number four has the ball. Offense has the control. <laughs> Ooh. So, two options here. 77 is actually behind the line. Red Grange is behind the line. Remember we set up to 20? If I were to throw the ball to him, then I could pivot him. He's behind the line. Uh, the problem is the defense also. I would get to pivot this guy. She's not engaged. Um, I think everyone else is engaged. So that's the reason I wouldn't go to him. Even though I would, if I did hit him, it would be a very simple pass. I might angle him this way so he'd shoot around there, but I would think that number 33 uh, has a really good chance of catching him. So, go just on the inside of his shoulder, right there. And for number 56, right, I have to call that. Got him, right in the left foot. Um, so, He's not allowed to be pivoted because he's over the line of scrimmage. Like I said, if had I hit number, I'm sorry, if I hit number 77, I would have been able to pivot him. So, mark this guy. I'll use my finger. The Eagles are hoping that this guy is going to uh, chase him down pretty well. I'm using my finger as the marker here. Go this guy just in case. Actually, you know what? I, I like the way he was before. If this guy does a hook, then uh, you want to catch him downfield. The control passes to the defense because they're going after the hit now, and he's over the line of scrimmage. There's no, in other words, the offense has no options. So, ah, all that for nothing. His forward progress is 27. That's an example of a pass play, an option play. Uh, we did a pitch, and we did a run. Um, and we also did a really lousy and complete pass when I should have hit it. So I had more practice to do.